A team of scientists in Queensland has created a possible game changer for crop protection. The product is called BioClay. Researchers say it's an environmentally friendly alternative to chemicals and pesticides. Lead researcher Professor Nina Mitter joins us now from Brisbane. Professor Nina Mitter, welcome. So what initially inspired you to get passionate about searching for a better way to do things in this field? Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me here. As you can see, I'm from India and I think agriculture is in my DNA. <laughs> and uh, I was actually baptized into the world of agriculture by a very wise old farmer who told me at the start of my career that if I can give him good seeds, he can do the rest. And that sort of has remained as my mantra in my life. And if I look at losses caused by pests and pathogens, even with the use of current chemicals and other measures, we still lose 20 to 40 percent of crops due to pests and diseases. And that really strongly impacts on our agricultural productivity. Not only that, these pesticides have toxicity issues to human health, to our precious waterways. You know, you get news releases like children dying due to consuming a community meal that was infected with a, contaminated with a toxic pesticide. Mm. And that sort of was the key driver that we do need measures which are environmentally sustainable. Yep. We do need to, you know, meet the goals of food security. And that's how I started looking at some noble ways to protect our yeah, crops I and diseases. I love that story of how you got inspired to look at it. Was he a relative or a, fam a family friend? Oh, uh, no, no. I had to do, when I started my career in India, we had to do an on-farm training for six months. And I was talking to a real farmer, adopted by a real farmer family, who gave me this advice. Oh, uh, good stuff. OK, so explain for us how bioclay works. So bioclay actually is a beautiful combination of nanotechnology and biology. So the nano part in it is the clay. Just like children use, you know, plasticine and Play-Doh, the difference is that here we are using clay nano sheets. So when I say nano sheets, um, these are really, really tiny, one billionth of a meter nano sheets. If you can imagine a puff pastry layers or a stack of paper. It's something like that stack. Yeah. So that's the clay element to it. And the biology element to it is a biomolecule which can specifically target a disease pathogen. So in this case, uh, I'm sure we all know about DNA from our CSI TV serials. So in this case, it is actually a cousin of DNA called RNA. So we use this clay as a vehicle to deliver that RNA onto a plant that will then protect the plant from that particular disease or a specific pathogen. So how does it protect the plant? So what happens is when we spray this clay onto the crop plant, the clay actually degrades on the plant surface. So that's another beautiful part of it, that within six to eight weeks, these layers peel off over time, just in the presence of moisture and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And the RNA, which is the key molecule, gets released on the plant surface, enters into the plant, and plants have this intrinsic defense mechanism built in them called gene silencing. And this RNA triggers that pathway. So when a disease-causing organism, let's say in virus in this case, comes onto the plant, the plant is already armed to defend itself from that virus. So does the one type of bioclay, can, it can protect all, from all sorts of diseases? No, bioclay, the, another best part of bioclay I must mention is that it is very target specific. So you know the current chemicals and toxic pesticides we use, they can even have an effect, they're broad spectrum, they can even have an effect on our useful microflora and fauna. Right. In this case, the bioclay will be specific to the disease that we want to control. The However, the best part is that we can make a cocktail bioclay, let's say, where we can use one bioclay spray to target multiple diseases. Mm. And but so we how, do, how do you alter the bioclay to target specific diseases? Right. So as I said, the key biology element is the RNA in here. And the RNA that we use is going, is going to be disease specific. So if let's say we can want to control disease A, a virus disease of cucurbits or our vegetable crops, we will have that RNA that can target that particular virus disease of a crop. If we also want to control an insect pest, 
or another pathogen of that crop, we will have that RNA mixed into the bioclay that can do for that particular disease as well. And so how long, once you've sprayed it on, how long is it effective in stopping that disease from affecting the plant? So at present, what we are looking at about, you know, um, ideally about eight weeks to about 12 weeks will be the protection period. And that's another, you know, advantage of it that after eight to 12 weeks, the clay would have degraded, the RNA is no longer, you know, has entered and is no longer there, like the plant has grown out of it. And therefore, um, your plant will be, it's, it's very brilliant for a clean green image or yeah. a clean green produce. And so it doesn't have to be sprayed again at the end of that period? It, it depends on the crop, yeah. you know, if it is a long term crop or if, if it is a vegetable crop, we can time it. Like if we know that this is the particular timing when these diseases come, we can, you know, yeah. just like any other scheduling of your pesticide sprays, we can have a sh spray regime built for bioclay. And is it likely to be much cheaper than current practices? So the clay is very cheap to produce. Um, however, it is the RNA and technology, you know, companies across the globe actually are now working to ma mass produce this RNA. Mm. So I'm hoping that we will be able to get a commercially viable product. Yeah. You mentioned that RNA is a cousin of DNA. Some say there will be those opposed to gen genetically modified food that will have similar concerns about this product. What's your response to that? So yeah, the best part is that in this case, we are not genetically modifying the plant. So we use gene silencing to genetically modify and get disease resistance. However, in this case, Joe, because we are just spraying it on the plant, the RNA that is entering is not getting integrated into the genome of the plant. And it does not have any other sequence to it or any other, you know, promoters or other sequences which we use for genetic modification. In this case, it is just that RNA from that pathogen. So even when you eat a normal vegetable, or a normal fruit product, sometimes you can't even see that there may be a virus infection. And viruses actually, when they replicate, they make this RNA in the plant. Mm -hmm. So yes, in this case, we are not making transgenic crops. We are not integrating the RNA into the genome of the plant. And that's another best part of it. Nina, I'd love to be there when you take this product back to that farmer who initially <laughs> inspired you to get into this back in India. Do you keep in touch with him? Oh, no, it's been a long time now. I'm, <laughs> I, okay. I'm a proud well, Aussie woman working more and more. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully this uh, works out well and so many people can benefit from this in the future. Nina Mitter, thanks so much uh, for talking to us this morning. It was really interesting. Thank you, Joe. Thank you.